This also says that vast regions have succumbed to severe aridification, uh, sometimes followed by desertification. Wildlife there has become a distant memory. Well, wildlife has, is already becoming a distant memory. Uh, there was an article published a while ago that said that in the past uh, four decades or so, we eliminated like 60 to 70% of all species on the planet. So we're definitely in the middle of a mass extinction. Absolutely. There's like no doubt about that. And once a certain amount of species are gone, then guess who's next? We are. Cities such as Marrakesh and Volgograd are on the verge of becoming deserts. Hong Kong, Barcelona, Abu Dhabi and many others are desalinating seawater uh, for years. Desperately trying to keep up with the constant wave immigration and with this demand, of course, with demand, rising demand. Extreme heat is on the marge. March, sorry. Uh, if you live in Paris, you endure summer temperatures that regularly go to 40, about 44 degrees Celsius, which is 111 Fahrenheit. Uh, so right now, when it happens, when uh, temperatures of Paris are this high, it's a headline grabbing event. Okay, many people like even CNN write about it. So, but this is going to become the norm. No longer, it's going to be a one off. This is going to be like almost every summer and it's going to increase. So people stay inside, they drink water and uh, they dream of air conditioning. So I, I lived in Europe for a, a long time, um, you know, in the UK, in France, in Switzerland. Um, I don't remember ever seeing an air conditioner unit. So this must be just not widespread at all. So people don't know about it, don't use it. But I, I think this, you know, people will have to use it a lot. You lie on the couch, a cold, wet towel on, over your face, and try to rest without dwelling on the poor farmers on the outskirts of town who, despite the droughts and wildfires, are still trying to grow grapes, olives, or soy. Luxuries for the rich, not for you. And then, of course, this is what I was saying. So you try not to think about this 2 billion people who live in the hottest parts of the world. So again, I, I, that's what I said. I highly doubt that people, you know, in Central America somewhere are really worried about some kind of farmer or fisherman in, in Vanuatu or some other island, Pacific, Pacific Island nation. I really, really doubt it. I just don't see it at all. I could be wrong, but I really don't think that's happening. So, uh, yeah, upwards 45 days per year, temperatures skyrocket to over 60 degrees Celsius, a point at which the human body cannot be outside for longer than about six hours because it loses the ability to cool itself down. This is important. We have a limit as a human body. We're not like robots. So there's a lot of things that affect us. We're very fragile, very fragile. So even in the U.S., there are some conflicts over water and battles between the rich who are basically, you know, who can afford it and the poor who cannot. That's what it says here. Food production is swinging wildly from month to month, season to season, depending on where you live. So I actually wrote a small paper about that, uh, talking, talking about Japan. Uh, some production areas like rice, for example, has to shift around because, you know, it's just like too hot in certain areas so it's going to move more north towards Hokkaido uh, but of course the fish life as well is different etc so some areas will be available for agriculture like Alaska or the Arctic because of you know melt melt uh, but our other areas like Mexico and California are going to be pretty much completely dried and so I don't know what's going to happen to people living there not going to be good one thing hasn't changed though if you have money then you have access this is going to keep going for a while until money just becomes pieces of paper which have no value whatsoever uh, china is still trying to export goods but disasters and wars rage choking off trade routes uh, the tyranny of supply demand is now unforgiving because of its increasing scarcity food can now wildly can now be wildly expensive Income inequality has never been this stark or this dangerous. So the nations are committed uh, to, you know, helping people, but there's going to be such an, a big influx of people that you're going to have to keep people out. 
So most countries' armies are basically now border border patrols. Lockdown is the goal, but it hasn't been a total success. Desperate people will always find a way. So the equatorial belt has become difficult to inhabit. Uh, parts of uh, Central America are moving towards Mexico and the U.S. Others are moving south towards the tips of Chile and Argentina. Uh, the same scenes, of course, are playing out in Europe and Asia. Uh, so some countries are trying to be nicer than others, uh, but eventually all of them will have to shut their borders and their wallets and ultimately their eyes. If you live in some temperate climates such as Canada and Scandinavia, you, you'll still be extremely vulnerable. So I have a friend in Canada, he bought a, well, I'm not sure if he bought it or he rented, I think he bought it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He got a condo in Toronto and uh, he showed like a picture of it. And he said that, you know, this is fine. And it was like by the water. And I warned him that this is going to get flooded soon. And he's like, it's fine. It's, it's not. It's just Toronto. Like, it's not going to happen. A few years later, the place is flooded. So there you go. It, it is going to happen. You, you, might, you, you can deny it for a point, to a point. And after that, it's going to affect you. So severe tornadoes, flash floods, wildfires, mudslides, and blizzards are often in the back of your mind. Depending where you live, you need to have a fully stocked stellar or emergency go back in your car. Um, six foot fire mode around your house. Well, to keep people out, I guess. People are glued to weather forecasts and only the foolhardy shut their phones off at night. If an emergency hit, you may only have minutes to respond. And that's true. If there's a big kind of wildfire that starts suddenly, it's going to spread quickly. And if you're asleep, especially, you have like five or 10 minutes sometimes to react or even one minute to react. That can be the difference between life and death. The weather is unavoidable, but lately the news uh, about what's going on in the borders are too much for people to endure. And this we already see with COVID-19. Oh, I'm tired of COVID-19 news. It's already, it's already happening. This is my point. It's already all happening in front of our eyes. Under increasing pressure from public health officials, news organizations have decreased the number of stories devoted to genocide, slave trading, refugee virus outbreaks. You can no longer trust the news, social media, Long the grim source of live feeds and disaster reporting is brimming with conspiracy theories and distorted videos. So, just want to comment on that here. It says, the news organizations have decreased the number of stories devoted to genocide. Well, we already see that again. If you remember a few years, even I think today, it's still going on actually, just shushed. But the genocide in Yemen, millions of people, millions of kids have died because of malnutrition, because aid was blocked from going to the country thanks to the U.S. embargo, in part. So the news organizations are already very busy at shaping the news that you see. We don't see the objective reporting we'd like to see. We see a very subjective reporting that they want us to see. The demise of human species is being discussed more and more. For many, uh, the only uncertainty is how long will last. How many generations will see the light of day? Suicides are the most obvious manifestation of a prevailing despair, but there are other indications, a sense of, a sense of bottomless loss, uh, unbearable guilt and fierce resentment at previous generations who didn't do what was necessary to ward off this unstoppable calamity. And we go back to this map again. So that's it I wanted to cover today on the show. Uh, so there's a lot in here to digest, but you know, um, watch the show, take your time, try to understand where the data is coming from. And, uh, you know, again, I said, if you're like an adult today, and if you don't convey these messages to your children, I kind of highly doubt that you care and love your children very much. Because if you did, you, you'd educate them on the topic, you'd inform them on the topic much more, so that they they're very well equipped to deal with the crisis that's coming. Because knowledge is key. Knowledge is absolutely key. If you don't have any knowledge, if you don't pass any knowledge down the line, you might as well just go back and move back into the caves. So that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, kind of a heavy episode, but there's a lot of good stuff in there. Very interesting and 
positive information to, to get from it. So I hope it's useful for people. And uh, I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.